Hi and welcome to After Hours with Bo and Tammy right here on These Changing Times at thesechangingtimes.ning.com. We are a listener supported radio station where if you'd like to donate, please visit us at our site and click on our donate button. Every little bit helps. We thank Patty for allowing us this venue, of course. Um, I should have Bo with me in a moment. Uh, this morning I'd like to go into depth on the 1929 Geneva Convention, the status of prisoners of war and what is known as the United States of America style or chain of events, um, congressional action, holding human beings hostage as prisoner of war and holding corporations and of course what you see as prisons called prisons the privatized aspect of what appears to be a decentralized form of government which of course is one of the elements of fourth generation warfare creating the illusion or the appearance that there is a decentralized form of government that there's all these departments and offices and chambers and all of these elusive things creating in the mind that this is just a monstrous thing it's too big to take down it's too big to take care of it's too big to do anything about when it all lands right back in the seat of Congress over and over and over and over again and of course they say this and they Articles of Confederation, Article 1. This is going to be called a style here, folks. It's a set of actions, congressional acts maintained by Congress to the betterment of Congress and the rest of the related, related criminal enterprise known and defined in Black's Law Dictionary, first edition, as Confederacy. Do we have you there, Bo? Not yet? Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 I'm here. How are you? What do you think? I mean, I'm, I'm just fed up. I've got all these agents surrounding us. You know, it's like throughout the days now, I'm, I'm so not just overwhelmed. You know, this is, these agents don't stop. You know, and they... Cinnamon one right after the other, selling concepts, selling theories, selling this or that, trying to limit their liability, trying to lessen what the accountability really is. And, and they're getting in nowhere. I'm not going to be bought off. I can't be bought off. I've gone this far. And I don't think they realize that. You know what? If they go back into my past history they realized that they already took everything I have you know I've lost everything and and there's not uh, no this is war it ends when I win or they kill me you know there's no other option because of what's riding on humanity at this time you know the human being is of utmost importance and um, I, I just can't believe the audacity sometimes, the gall sometimes. I mean, they've got these just the weirdest things they come up with to justify their behavior. What are you seeing? Right. Well, I thought we were going to go over the Geneva Convention, and now they got um, so Rockwell still behind bars. That's the bottom line here, and. Um, and uh, there's no warrant, there's no order, there's um, nothing but a bunch of hot air being whispered by corporate counsel attorneys into the cops' ears who are fall guys for the attorneys, you know, and when I say attorneys, I'm really talking about the ones wearing the black dresses too, because as we have evidence in my case, there are no judges, they're all simply attorneys. I mean, this is by the evidence. This isn't uh, some theory. Right. Okay, so you got a bunch of uh, attorneys in black dresses that work for the bar, got a, a fictional government called the bar, all right, um, 
And what people are not seeing is um, the lower chambers of the House of Representatives that uh, is basically Bar City. And so we got all these Bar City bar attorneys running your, which you're calling your government, and they're putting everybody behind bars, better uh, their uh, coffers for their banking schematic that they design so nicely and as it's stated in 1929 they uh, put you in that uh, surety situation at Northern Holding Corporation. Well and that's the point we're at now. Now we've evidence that they're not holding him with cause. It means warrant. There's no cause. We've evidence that they're torturing him. Even under the guise of him being a prisoner of war. They're not following the rules of war. Um, this allows them to voluntarily withdraw from their contractual agreements through the League of Nations, through the covenant of the League of Nations that went into then the United Nations Charter and of course uh, 1864 Geneva Convention, 1929 Geneva Convention and up and down, side to side, they violated, you know, code and statute. They violated treaty. They violated charter. They violated policy. And this is like the final stage here. Um, to be a member of the United Nations, of course, you have to be adhering to the rules of war, or the rules of holding prisoners of war, which was the foundation of the United Nations. It was a, a push toward peace for each other, and human beings were all stuffed into the holding corporations throughout those articles of confederation, articles of incorporation, to maintain a, a better business structure on this corporation. So it's it's got all the, these faces and it still goes right back to Congress, right back to congressional actions. Um, you know, that's what each charter was, the Atlantic Charter, United Nations Charter. Um, you know, before you tell me, you know, that the United States Incorporated is not a member, it's chartered by the United States states incorporated. Now, Congress has its hand in, in everything and um, this mall, which is what it is, if you look at the business structure, it's a big mall and it rents out franchises, franchises called Indiana and New Mexico and Washington State and, all of those are franchises, and as well as Orange County and L.A. is a franchise, and Boston is a franchise. You know, all of these are franchises, and then they have these municipal governments underneath those franchises, maintaining, you know, hedges on the spread of productivity. So this whole structure it's calling you basically just the product the um, you're just a shirt or a pair of pants or a necessary good a consumptive good is actually what they've called you on one end of you uh, the consumptive good consumes it eats and eats and eats and buys these concepts and buys these advertisements and ultimately it buys the product and the worst one that keeps human beings in perpetual slavery is the ability that they've come up with, or the capacity rather, of consuming oil and oil byproducts. And so in that consumptive capacity, if you will, you're the one that's backing the petrodollar because your consumption is now guaranteed. You're buying plastic bottled water and plastic cars, plastic siding now for homes, plastic pipes, plastic everything. And the reliance on this 
is reliance on oil and a lot of people don't realize that yet they think that well no I'm not consuming oil because I'm not driving all the time I'm not using gas I'm not using oil to heat my homes or whatever else the greatest addiction or the greatest consumption is actually in plastics and oil byproducts you know and these things keep that thing running well, the United Nations is, you know, OPEC and all of these things. And the uh, unions formulated out of that. And when they're violating the rules of war and their original charters and voluntarily withdrawing from membership, well, they're not supported by those things. And so everybody needs to be aware of what is actually going on at this time in this case which it's all one case it's not anything uh, different Rocco's the same as Kurt Martin Kurt Martin came in as the United States Rocco came in as the United States the children are the United States and that includes all of humanity and so it's just one ongoing and I was trying to explain that the other day as per the insurance by placing and maintaining evidence on a record, it's the same thing as if the insurance company itself witnessed the accident or witnessed a crime occurring or witnessed whatever. There's no wiggle room for the insurance and the liability that the insurance has when the insurance company can witness the action itself without having it interpreted by an adjuster per se so it, that's where we're at now and, and um, you know I wanted to do some after hours with you because there's so many things that are happening because of this case because of the insurance liability because of the risk because of risk management that we're seeing these last couple weeks but of course Revolution Radio has been hit um, terribly on YouTube uh, we're not exactly sure what's going on uh, they did take down the page and, and we've had to move to another location um, you know all of these things are of course normally engineered by the CIA something their uh, pressures force of whatever kind through fourth generation warfare so we're prepared for those things but we do want to get the information out there as best we can while we're essentially being hobbled or attempted on all right yeah so basically what we're finding now is that under the 1929 Geneva Convention that uh, now Rocco being a prisoner of war it's all his evidence to be he hasn't been evidence to be um, any uh, one of their citizens that they can um, do uh, with uh, as they please because they own them you know he backed out of that system quite some time ago and uh, there's no evidence that he's harmed anybody ever and that's hammered home in uh, you know even the opposition's uh, court documents okay throughout Rocco's case all right so now he's being held as a prisoner of war okay that's what it comes down to and they're not even adhering to the uh, rules of uh, you know um, rules of war in any kind you know it's not no, right only the 1929 Geneva Convention or the, that rule of war it's all of them and at the foundation they can only take prisoners of war if they ultimately declare war specifically against human beings with cause and of course they'd be perpetrating war crimes if there is no cause which is the next step and I want to get that on public record right now because the only step left is for the United States to actually declare war on humanity and ultimately you know violate every war because there's no cause um, you are not a threat to the well-being of corporations because corporations are fictional entities but corporations are a threat to you and um, you can see that the events at Fukushima Japan BP oil disaster Gulf Coast 
and so many uh, oil rig disasters around the world near Australia, New Zealand, it seems like they have them weekly. Uh, but, you know, we're a corporation, so you can't really spank us too bad. And we're sorry about killing a bunch of you and your wildlife and everything, but, you know. Thank you for paying your taxes, although they increased on your uh, consumption. And with the gas prices, we had to increase your taxes because we had an oil spill and we need you to clean it up. That's yeah, what they yeah that's do. what they do. They're basically just siphoning off of your wealth and your energy to keep themselves doing what they do, making more and more so you can have less and less. And you, as a citizen patronizing the uh, system as it is, uh, you're, you're, you know, maybe not before now, um, you didn't know, but now we're here to tell you, okay, you should know that when you're offering yourself as a negotiable instrument, that uh, they're going to go ahead and Hold you salvage you right. under the uh, salvage laws. And, um, you know. As a prisoner of war, because you're without a government. And that's something very important for everybody to realize. In the document section over on chooseyourside.com or dot org sorry when you go to the resource and then documents authorized documents section you will find Robert Richards forgiveness and, and executive documents now he has fully expatriated he is not only expatriated he actually uh, facilitated the hostile takeover of the franchise name in the forgiveness doc and in the executor doc he came in as a subsidiary of that original trust and as that subsidiary which is known as a black backflip takeover nobody can be holding him prisoner of war because he's entered into his own trust that's what those documents are those are trust documents and in that trust it goes beyond the fictions that were created back when the original 13 colonies, which of course is Congress, declared the trust. And what they had done is they took over the Sestri K Trust by stuffing that those monies out of the treasury into the Massachusetts land trusts, first of all. The second phase of the extortionate scheme uh, was the declaration of trust, which is a sub substitute, according to their own documentation, into the public utilities. So now, every time you get a bill or charges against your estate from a public utility, you're being charged with a crime and build for it. That's what those bills are. We are trying to fix this as soon as possible, but we're dealing with a whole lot of bureaucracy. We're dealing with entities that are psychopathic in nature, and that's why they're in the positions they're in, who are not of relative being. And we're going as fast as we can. It'll happen, you know, immediately. In one hour, their house is made desolate. But this takes time. You know, these things are just, it's just mind-boggling to read through all of everything that they've ever done. And, you know, I, I sometimes ponder on this aspect because I've probably only dealt with or delved into less than 20% of all of the evidence that is there and that is against them, that, that maintains their criminal confederacy, that maintains the criminal enterprise that they are. And the reason for that is usually because it's so overwhelming. And so if anybody else would like more, you know, we've got it. I've got it. I've got the directives to, you know, off human beings and I've got the you know 
clinical trials, clinical psychiatry, clinical aspects of all of these things, and and that's something that you know we don't touch on yet because it's so hard to deal with. Um, the you know we speak about the first and second welfare theorem, and you know if you go study Pareto's rule, you realize right away what this is, and and that uh, family court allows adherence to Pareto and, and um, the Austrian economic scheme. I mean, it's, it's, it's so horrifying, but bottom line again is it's a very few individuals at the top, uh, offices, officers at the top, um, we're almost over the hump here. I mean, we're this one's way less than it was, you know, back in October. So we're doing well. Um, they are taking each other. They are cannibalizing each other quicker and quicker now. We're seeing just, you know, flames from their side. Um, but this should kick into high gear within the next week or so. Well, so when we um, look at uh, Rocco's situation, and again, all right, um, you mentioned some spec specifics about, you know, what they're doing to them under their own, uh, against their own um, rules of war here. Absolutely. Um, let, me, let me grab that up. Uh, all right. Yeah, I thought that's what we were here to. Oh, yeah, I get off on my little tangents there. Well, all of them. I mean... When you start in the 1929 Geneva Convention, Section 2, Article 9, uh, goes into prisoner of war camps. Prisoners of war may be interned in a town, fortress, or other place and bound not to go beyond certain fixed limits. They also may be interned in enclosed camps. They, they may not be confined or imprisoned except as an indispensable measure of safety or sanitation. And only while the circumstances which necessitate the measure continue to exist. Now, they have no cause. He has not harmed a human being, meaning he's not to be in prison without having harmed a human being, safety or sanitation. Prisoners captured in unhealthful regions, blah, blah, blah. We'll skip that one. Um, it walks into installation of camps. Article 10, prisoners of war shall be lodged in buildings or in barracks, affording all possible guarantees of hygiene and healthfulness. The quarters must be fully protected from dampness, sufficient heat, sufficiently heated and lighted. All precautions must be taken against danger of fire. With regard to dormitories, the total surface minimum cubic amount of air arrangement and material of bedding like conditions shall be the same as for the troops at base camps of the detaining power. So there, there's not allowed to be any prisons, private or otherwise. Okay? So the same treatment that the United States Army gives its soldiers. It's the same treatment afforded to all prisoners of war, which they've been maintaining you are, every human, since 1933, when the Congress declared its own bankruptcy and became its own trustee of its own bankruptcy to, of course, put you into prisoner of war status. Your government declared bankruptcy. That means you don't have one whereby corporations are holding you prisoner of war, and that is what you are patronizing. You're patronizing the United States Incorporated. Chapter 2 goes into food and clothing. He's been denied certain conditions already based on the fact or based on the evidence that he will not contract with them. He is not a prisoner of war. He is Robert Richard House of Larson, and they're having a really hard time with these things as they threaten him on evidence. And that was sent to their insurer as well as one of their employers relating to this particular 
rule of war set of rules. And this goes back to the League, Covenant of the League of Nations, 1924, as well as this that I'm reading from, the 1929 Geneva Convention. It goes into Intellectual and Moral Needs of Prisoners of War, Chapter 4. Prisoners of War shall enjoy complete liberty in the exercise of their religion, including attendance at the services and the sole discretion that they comply with the measures of order and police issued by the military authorities. Ministers of religion, prisoners of war, whatever their denomination, shall be allowed to minister fully to members of the same religion. He is be de being denied food items related to his beliefs. Every camp of prisoners of war shall be placed under the command of a responsible officer. That's the internal discipline. Besides the external marks of respect provided by the regulators, regulations in force in the armies with regard to their nationals, prisoners of war must salute all officers of the detaining power. Officers who are prisoners of war bound to salute any officers of a higher or equal rank of that power. So far, they've punched him in the chest, they've tased him numerous times, they've never saluted Rocco. Special provisions regarding officers and persons of equivalent status Upon the beginning of hostilities, belligerents shall be bound to communicate to one another the titles and ranks in use in their respective armies with a view to assuring equality of treatment between corresponding ranks of officers and persons of equivalent status. That has not been done. Officers and persons of equivalent status who are prisoners of war shall be treated with regard due to their rank and age. Uh, financial resources of prisoners of war, subject to private arrangements between belligerent powers, and particularly those provided in Article 24, officers and persons of equivalent status who are prisoners of war shall receive from the detaining power the same pay as officers of corresponding rank in the armies of that power, on the condition, however, that this pay does not exceed that to which they are entitled in the armies of the country which they have served. My fee schedule says they're to be paying him $33 billion. This pay shall be granted them in full once a month, if possible, and without being liable to any deduction for expenses incumbent upon the detaining power, even when they are not in favor of the prisoners. An arrangement between the belligerents shall fix the rate of exchange applicable to this payment, which was done in the uh, writ of press pay, in the absence of such arrangement, arrangement, the rate adopted shall be enforced at the openings of hostilities. That was done. The day they were attempting on him, they were in receipt within an hour, served by duly authorized process server, the fee schedule, and related information. Article 24, upon the outbreaks of hostilities, the belligerents shall, by common agreement, fix the maximum amount of ready money which prisoners of war, various ranks, and classes shall be allowed to keep in their possession. That was not facilitated with the United States. Transfer of prisoners of war. Unless the conduct of military operations so requires, sick and wounded prisoners of war shall not be transferred as long as their recovery might be endangered by the trip. And they had busted into that home and harmed Rocco. He was not to be transported elsewhere, including as a prisoner of war. He has a government. He's not up for grabs. Let's see. Prohibited labor, Chapter 3, Article 31, labor furnished by prisoners of war shall have no direct relation with war operations. It is especially prohibited to use prisoners for manufacturing and transporting arms or munitions of any kind or for transporting material intended for combatant units, including license plates. 
In case of violation of the provisions of the preceding paragraph, prisoners after executing or beginning to execute the order shall be free to have their protest presented through the mediation of the agents which functions are set forth in Article 43 and 44 and in the absence of an agent through the mediation of representatives of the protecting power. It is forbidden to use prisoners of war at unhealthful or dangerous work. Any aggravation of the conditions of labor by disciplinary measures is forbidden. Wages. Article 34. Prisoners of war shall not receive wages for work connected with the administration, management, maintenance of the camps. Prisoners utilized for other work shall be entitled to wages to be fixed by agreements between the belligerents. Our fee schedule is $33 billion each time they alter its heading. These agreements shall, be spe shall also specify the part which the camp administration may retain, the amount of which shall belong to the prisoner of war, and the matter and that amount shall be put in its disposal during the period of his captivity. While awaiting the conclusion of the said agreements, payments of labor for prisoners of war shall be settled according to the rules given below. Work done for the state shall be paid for in accordance with the rates enforced for soldiers of the National Army doing the same work, or if none exists, according to a rate in harmony with the work performed. When the work is done for the account of other public administrators or for private persons, conditions shall be regulated by agreement with the military authority. Pay remaining to the credit of the prisoner shall be delivered to him at the end of his captivity. In case of death, it shall be forwarded through the dip diplomatic channel to the heirs of the deceased. We go through external relations. Of course, our communications have been impeded because you cannot claim the felon last name, 18 U.S.C. 1342. Prisoners of War Relations with the Authorities, Chapter 142, Chapter 243, Article 43. Call attention to that. It all maintains um, communication efforts. Chapter 3, Penalties Applicable to Prisoners of War, General Provisions, Article 45, Prisoners of War shall be subject to the laws, regulations, and orders enforced in the armies of the detaining power. An act of insubordination shall justify the adoption towards them of the measures provided by such laws, regulations, and orders. The provisions of the present chapter, however, are reserved. Punishments other than those provided for the same acts for soldiers of the national armies may not be imposed upon prisoners of war by military authorities and courts of the detaining power. Rank being identical, officers, non-commissioned officers or soldiers who are prisoners of war undergoing a disciplinary punishment shall not be subject to less favorable treatment than that provided in the same armies of the detaining power with regard to the same punishment. Any corporal punishment, any imprisonment in quarters without daylight, and in general, any form of cruelty is forbidden. Collective punishment for individual acts is forbidden. Anybody who's been charged under 27 CFR 72.11 is forbidden to be charged under the rules of war. And I'll repeat that, Article 46, last line. Collective punishment for individual acts is also forbidden. This means that case law and common law are unlawful on their face and violate the 1929 Geneva Convention. Acts constituting an offense against discipline and particularly attempted escape shall be verified immediately for all prisoners of war, commissioned or not, prevented arrest, shall be reduced to the absolute minimum. Judicial proceedings against prisoners of war shall be conducted as rapidly as the circumstances permit. Preventative imprisonment shall be limited as much as possible. In all cases, the duration of preventative imprisonment shall be deducted from the disciplinary or judicial punishment inflicted, provided that this deduction is allowed for national soldiers. Prisoners of war may not be treated differently from any other prisoners after having suffered the judicial or disciplinary punishment which has been imposed on them. However, pun prisoners punished as a result of attempted escape may be subject to special surveillance, which, however, may not entail the suppression of the guarantees guaranteed prisoners by the present convention. No prisoner of war may be deprived of his rank by the detaining power. 
prisoners given disciplinary punishment and it may not be deprived of the prerogatives attached to their rank. In particular, officers and persons of equivalent status who suffer punishment involving deprivation of liberty shall not be placed in the same quarters as non-commissioned officers or pri privates being punished. <coughs> Excuse me. Well, let me skip through. It talks more about the escape aspects, attempted escapes. Um... Article 52, belligerents shall see that the competent authorities exercise the greatest leniency in deciding the questions of whether an infraction committed by a prisoner of war should be punished by disciplinary or judicial measures. It shall be the case, especially when it is in question of deciding an act in connection with escape or attempted escape, the prisoner may not be punished more than once because of the same act or the same count. Oh... No prisoner of war of whom a disciplinary punishment has been imposed who might be eligible for repatriation may be kept back because he was not he has not undergone the punishment. Prisoners to be repatriated who might be threatened with penal prosecution may be excluded from repatriation until the end of the proceedings and if necessary until the completion of the punishment. Those who may already be imprisoned by reason of a sentence may be detained until the end of their imprisonment. Belligerents shall communicate to each other the list of those who may not be repatriated for the reasons given in the preceding paragraph. Now, the one of the opening statements was, nobody can be arrested if they haven't harmed anybody. Two. Disciplinary Punishments, Article 54. Arrest is the most severe disciplinary punishment which may be imposed on a prisoner of war. The duration of a single punishment may not exceed 30 days. The maximum of 30 days may not further be exceeded in the case of several acts for which the prisoner has to go undergo discipline at the time when it is ordered for him whether or not these acts are connected. When, during or after the end of a period of arrest, a prisoner shall have a new disciplinary punishment imposed upon him, a space of at least three days shall separate each of the periods of arrest if one of them is ten days or more. Article 55, subject to the provisions given in the last paragraph of Article 11, food restrictions allowed in the armies of the detaining power are applicable as increase in punishment to prisoners of war given disciplinary punishment. However, these restrictions may be ordered only if the state of health of the prisoners punished permits it. Uh, they have to prove that there's cause to do these things. And again, Robert Richard is unlawfully held as a prisoner of war in violation of the rules of war, all of them, not just this one, and a complete and utter business schematic maintained and perpetrated once again by the United States Incorporated outside of any possible justifiable means of holding him. Yeah, he, he hasn't gotten any... Uh Toothpaste have been denying him soap, you know, a couple of things on there. It's been over 30 days already, hasn't it? Absolutely. It was January uh, 31st. How, how, how did we get this far down the road where uh, nobody even thinks they have to adhere to the rules of war? I mean, these attorneys just, you know, been doing this so long that, you know, they're used to doing whatever they want to do. Um, well, they know these rules because they're members of the United Nations. So ignorance of the law is no excuse. Right. Well, we certainly don't see them um, following their own rules. Now, what's the uh, blowback then Then um, when the circle's around to uh, Biden back in the uh, rear end? They lose another source of funding. The United Nations, um, they're losing tax breaks. They're losing everything that they've relied on being members of the United Nations that's all gone now because they've been evidence to have voluntarily withdrawn their membership 
So what do we have to look forward to from the United States Incorporated? They just become more thuggish or? Well, they're going to have a hard time affording it. Up till now, it's been private funding, as you know. The United Nations is private funding. The United Nations is such as um, Microsoft and Google and everything else. But now their funding's cut off because they're all under foreclosure, including Microsoft and Google, because this is what this applies to. The prisoners of war are kept not in the corporations that have captured them, and it says that in the 1929 Geneva Convention, but they're in the under the power of the holding corporation that holds the um, corporations. And, and that's what happened in 1933. All of those corporations folded under, I went under bankrupt status, and they're all in the holding corporations. And that holding corporation was holding human beings to be that stock option, the thing that backs that stock and makes it produce. And now they're losing that ability by moving forward, violating the absolute. I mean, they can't be a corporation if they've abrogated their membership agreements. Okay, so are we looking at the um, complete dismantlement of the United States Incorporated? Or are we looking and for a rest? And the United Nations. Right, well, because the United Nations just basically is an action of Congress anyways. Right, but that includes Microsoft and Google and YouTube and all of these publicly traded corporations. They're publicly oh, right, right, through all of the articles of uh, incorporation, all the other corporations. Right. Yeah, so we're looking at getting um, our old YouTube back maybe at some point um, as a very... Uh, well, it would be in, under the control of the authority minimum. of the United States, lowercase. Right. Well, I mean, that's what we'll do. I mean, we'll have um, open source software, so what's left of Microsoft um, has to be disseminated back into open source. Right, general welfare. Uh, that's right. Everything's going to go into general welfare. And it's, uh, no, no, uh, you know, uh, censorship and nonsense on uh, on YouTube. Uh, right, it's under the I mean, these are all party. little things. I mean, the main thing is, it's like, you know, what, what what's going to be some of the big activity here uh, with the foreclosure process? Everything all at once because the policy changes. Um, the policy has to change. That's the obligation under the insurance rules, the rules of insurance. They cannot take on that burden. Their insurer does not cover for acts of war. Um, it actually, there's an exclusion clause in the cover holding um, insurance that excludes acts of war and risks associated with civil war. So regardless, they're, they're done. They're done. Their insurance does not cover what they were doing. That means that their personal property is up for grabs to pay back what is owed to the United States. Okay, well these guys, you know, in Congress, you know, Rand Paul and um, um, Bachman Turner Overdrive and um, Santa Claus, whoever else is in Congress. I, mean, I don't know all their names. They all look alike to me. Right. Rockefeller Head. Right. Um, Perlmutter. All of these CIA presentations. You know, Joseph um, um, Bidem. Yep. And, okay, so, I mean, what's... I mean, they're so used to doing this, doing whatever they want, basically getting away with it, and, you know, what's to stop them from uh, regrouping in their uh, secret bunker somewhere and just setting up a bunch of nukes? The insurance can't afford the liability. It's not going to like the loss. It has to cover for the franchises that have maintained and perpetrated war without declaring war, of course. They can't declare war against a citizen because then they wouldn't be your government, right? I mean, that the, then the cartoon is over. 
Well, okay, I'm just... They're reliant on consent of the sheeple to agree with what they're doing. Well, of course, yeah, that's if why they, they have all these sales pitches every day on, uh, you know, mainstream media. Right. If they came in and said, well, yeah, you're our enemy, and we pick you, and and that, that neighbor's child over there for to offset congressional bankruptcy, so I'm going to... I'm going to kill that child, and I'm going to take your grandma into an institutionalized state just because I can, because I declared war against you. That's at the point in time when the citizens rise up against them. It's not a good idea for a government to declare a war against its citizens. Yeah, but they have. I mean, they have been doing it, you know. Um. Absolutely, but we pushed them into a corner and said, look, you're perpetrating war. Either you're going to declare war, or you're going to lose everything through the insurance. And the insurer does not want to lose. That's the insurance. They're not going to lose for the actions of these franchises, these what appears to be rogue franchises. But now these same, you know, attorneys uh, and um, big players in Congress globally, they have ownership of this of these insurance companies don't they not the top level the okay. insurance actually is backed by the Treasury it's always been backed by the Treasury it's to create an environment where the human being was protected and was encased in this bubble and insured against loss or damage but what happened was Congress flipped it all the way around and said, well, with the 14th Amendment, that from now on we're going to have some life insurance for this person, which, as you know, is a corporation. So the corporations have been insured since from and guaranteed against loss and damage, loss and liability, and that's what you see in the indemnification clauses, indemnification conventions, same as Hitler's indemnification of 1933. Those things were leaving liability off of the corporations and protecting the corporations over the human being. Well, we've never really been here, so it's going to be um, first for everyone. So, um, whatever happens, uh, well, I just... Um, just like to know what to, uh, you know, get the people ready for, because it's going to be um, uh, shake the foundations time. Okay, and anybody, and, and I especially urge officers to read the Geneva Conventions, because any officer of the court, any officer, law enforcement officer, you have been held prisoner of war um, outside of a prison setting, throughout all of your life and now is the time to choose your side I know that you know we've got some agents there that are rearing to go on this war stuff uh, but I can guarantee you it, the fallout affects you it affects everybody why don't you explain the insurance a little bit what, like what the insurance is uh, uh, Lloyd's of London right is on top or well it's on top like in London, but that's just the insurance marked. And a lot of that information is state secure information at this time because they just received service last week. But yes, Lloyds of London is on top, but that is not who we're dealing with at this time because of what was created in 1802 with the 1802 Indemnification Convention. Lloyds of London is an insurance mark, including human beings that have been the underwriters of policy. Now, if you look at the bar, it is not a bar like in a courtroom on the floor, or, you know, hanging on a flag or any other symbology, the bar is actually a standard. The bar is lowered by psychopathy and the bar is elevated 
by humanity. And once you raise the standard and say, well, I'm not going to take that anymore, then the bar standards go up or they can go down. It depends on what you're going to accept, what human beings are going to accept. Are they going to accept debt wrapped around their necks, debt wrapped around their baby's necks? Are they going to take the high road and raise the standard, get rid of psychopathy? remove it from its ability to harm humanity. Yeah, and that's what they've been doing so far, is like putting a price tag on their children, price tag on their parents, um, price tags on their siblings and themselves, and, uh, you know, and, you know, so, 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 I mean, this is the fundamental shift that uh, basically should be without uh, you know, it, it should be just common sense, but, um, you know, attorneys just got in there and twisted everything over time ever so slightly, but they keep twisting and, and turning, and, um, you know, I mean, that's why we have a society today that where people uh, have, you know, putting put price tag on their babies and such. It's sick. Absolutely. And the social engineered aspect, of course, you can see this dynamic in the EVE. Um, she owns children. You can see this in the metaphor of Medea. She kills children to get back at her husband. The standard has to be raised. The bar has to be raised. You can no longer tolerate these things. And the first evidence of the bar being raised was when you actually repudiated your ex-wife, got rid of her with cause, and said, no, I'm not going to tolerate this individual, she's a psychopath, and the related fallout is what you're seeing now. The female, or the whore of Babylon, is being cut out of the equation. That's what was required to raise the bar. You cannot live in a society that's surrounded by psychopaths raising children. That's sick. That's sick. The children are absolutely tortured in that instance especially when they have the father's core, when they see reality, and then they, they're taken, like your children and like Rocco's children, they were taken off of you in order to show them this, this other way of living, which is absolute psychopathy, consumptive behavior, which is what's described in Genesis. Cain and Abel, Cain or chaos, cannibalizes ability. It's a consumptive behavior. And the bar has to be risen. It has to be risen by humanity. It has to say, no, we're not going to tolerate this anymore. I don't care if she looks like Barbie, she still killed somebody. Get rid of it. I don't care if it has nice perky breasts, get rid of it. I don't care if it can tear jerk, you know, and go from zero to sixty in, you know, a few seconds. Get rid of it. Well, yeah, I mean, we got to get over that hurdle, I mean, of, you know, what, whatever the package looks like, you, you know, like Obama, and he's well-spoken, and he's, you know, a good-looking guy, and he's, he's, you know, um, smiles and portrays um, the, you know, vision uh, of a... Uh, leader that cares and stuff and nothing could be farther from the truth so you got to look at what they do not what they say absolutely or anything what else Jesus said forever that's what he said in in matthew 23 he says you know what they're, they're, you're all sitting at the right hand of moses what the heck are you doing sitting at the right hand of moses number one second very next nice sentence two, two sentences he says you know they say they do these things, they don't do, they don't raise even one of their fingers to do those things. And that's what you've seen with all of the agents. They're like, oh, you need to go file the UCC1, and all of these agents are telling everybody to do all these things, Craig Kerr and others, they won't raise their own finger to do those things. I've asked them for evidence. Show me that you've done it. Oh, I know it works. Go talk to my friend. I, and I tell people, I don't want consensus reality. I don't want to hear the second repeat of that statement. I want the evidence that you're actually doing these things. And nobody's ever shown me that. 
Right. Yeah, like when, um, well, okay, we don't need to mention any names, but they're out there telling you to do things, and you just know by, you know, there's no evidence, lack of evidence that they're not doing them, doing it themselves. So right, but they'll parade around other individuals who are doing those things that they're using as guinea pigs, and that makes me sick. That is so disgusting. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, the agents are everywhere. You know, there's commenters on my YouTube still about common law. You know. Well, look, we got common law juries now in New York is the latest headline. and um, Yeah, juries are just ringers. They're still they're just, giving yeah. the same lack of evidence from the same attorneys who don't want evidence on the court record. And the jury's going to find in the favor of the attorney that gives them what they wanted to hear. Common law is communism. So how is that a good thing? Absolutely. But grand jury sounds so pretty and so big. Grand. It sounds so grand. We gotta buy that concept. It sounds better than just a jury, right? Yeah, anything under the law merchant, which was facilitated basically um, through Amjur Second under the Negotiable Instruments Act, all forms of law that you see that they're using, and they use them all in these courts. They use common law, okay? Right. It uh, depends on the market conditions. Right. Right. Or well, the cop uses different aspects of the law to facilitate an arrest, common law, admiralty, you know, like... They, Whatever they can They do. might not be conscious of it themselves, but they've been handed the policy by these attorneys that write policy, and policy is just uh, nothing to do with law. It's just uh, basically poly means many, and CY comes from the word side so to kill many is what policy is about and people think policy is a good thing though yeah no, we got a good policy here well it is now and and the new insurance policy actually removes the predator from ability to harm mankind and that's what we've seen since not only august and then october there was a kick kick in the pants there but now, just the last two weeks, now we're seeing the meat and potatoes. Judges, administrators, directors. Uh, yesterday or the day before, we were reporting on a marshal uh, that is now in the shoot. More and more attorneys every day, doctors every day. Um, same theme, same storyline over and over again as these estates are redistributed to pay back congressional bankruptcy but this time it's a different policy the bar is risen you have to continue raising that bar you have to continue putting your foot down and saying no i'm not going to tolerate this type of behavior around me around my families around my communities and in that then you know that's how this occurs it's not just us doing it on the front lines you know, I did some things this last week that, as an impulsive me, just like always, you know, I, I sat back on my butt later and realized, you know, man, if I would have thought about that prior to doing that, I'm sure I would have had a lot of fear. You know, there's a lot of things that go into this back end um, that we do need the all of our others to stand up and you know especially don't patronize this thing you know, don't call on it to pick you up as a prisoner of war uh, don't ask it through the red cross don't ask it through the hospital settings don't don't file your taxes because they've sent you a menacing letter you know these things need to be dealt with and they need to be held accountable for sending you items and articles in the mail in violation of 18 U.S.C. 1341 where they're attempting to address a fiction in a fictional name to extort monies off of you. And that's what that one's all about. And that's in relation to 18 U.S.C. 1342, uh, the fictional name and address to begin with. And so they are indictable offenses. Um, 
they need to be held accountable for these things instead of laying down which is what the law is it literally means to lay down everybody must 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 shall be resurrected and that simply means able to stand again Jesus was not written of to be reincarnated or to come back from the dead it speci specifies throughout the Bible that Jesus is simply resurrected able to stand again and this is your time right now to do so okay yeah so yeah and they're already talking about like 2016 elections and oh man this is sickening yeah I mean, they're gonna push this consensus reality right to their there's gonna be nobody left in Congress and they're gonna say well we're gonna find somebody to run or something right. like that right I the mean I mean they're just almost they're almost to the point of retardation right uh, what part of bankrupt don't they get? Well, it's like this death row thing. You know, they don't want to admit it. Of course, they're in denial. Um, the the evidence is in front of them in the mainstream media. You know, and and today was just profound back to back. What I was reading, um, I have to look that up. Do you have any headlines to go through while I do that real quick? Because I had some interesting ones, but uh, I don't my... have them open. My computer is uh, um, being um, being like Congress right now here. Thanks to Congress and the influence of these things. Yeah, it looks like it's been subjugated to congressional action or something. It's just sitting there spinning. Oh, my favorite thing was a reverse CIA presentation that was calling attention to another CIA presentation on the... Uh, New York Post earlier today. Oh yeah, I did look at that earlier. That was good. Oh, it was beautiful. So, banking isn't a wonderful life now, as suicide sweep financial district wah, is what wah, the headlines are. Yeah. Well, and you go back to the nineteen forties, <laughs> and they were selling banks. You know, you have um, Jimmy Stewart got up there, and it's wonderful life, which they're referring to. And he's selling banks. Banks are the good guy. If you ever fall on hard times, you can just go to your local banker and he loves you. He'll just hand you money, you know. And it's like, oh, my God, this is so funny that they're calling attention to that. Don't call it a law firm like it really is. Just call it a bank. Right. And call the co call a court uh, that is a bank. Uh, call that, you know, a court. Court. Justice. I want to read from the body because it was so profoundly funny. In the last two months, there's been a rash of suicides and mysterious deaths sweeping the world of high finance. And and get this, Bo, you're, you're going to laugh. Quote, J.P. Morgan has been the hardest hit with three untimely deaths in just the last few weeks. And last week, Autumn Radke left a 28-year-old CEO of First Meadow, small cyber currency exchange, jumped to her death in Singapore. J.P. Morgan has been the hardest hit. Oh, it's being victimized, Bo. I bet it feels so bad. This pretend entity presented to this sheeple, now it's being claimed and maintained as a victim. J.P. Morgan has been the hardest hit. Yeah, yeah, and ironically, that's the one that um, was brought up um, uh, by... Congress. Uh, well, yeah, yeah, in, in the bankruptcy uh, stuff with, um, oh goodness, I, don't, I can't, uh, McFadden. Right. McFadden was the one that was calling out J.P. Morgan in particular. Right, and then he happened to be killed after three attempts. Right. In 1917, that's what Charles Lindbergh did. He, he sat up there on the House floor and he said, J.P. Morgan's one of the treasonous uh, entities here amongst Congress members, House members, and Senate members, and you know we all know what happened to his son. They killed his son. Yeah, I mean um, McFadden was, you know, all the evidence points towards him being a good guy, but he must not have been altogether really that bright to understand what he was going against, or he was going against uh, what he was involved with. Um, right, none he, of he us. He was missing something. None of us, and it took. Well, but he was a congressman. Right. He should have known this stuff. Yeah, but they don't because Nancy did the same thing. She went up against him. She did the report to Congress about the corruption of child protection. Right. 
and they killed her and it wasn't until that moment in time that I learned that no we're not we're not going to go to Congress I used to petition I used to be uh, and joined at the hip with that change.org all of those things I used to be so indoctrinated and, and believing that there was actually an entity there that was you know for humanity and I watched it with my own eyes and it was at that moment in time when Nancy was murdered that we realized no we're not going to go to Congress we're going to go around Congress we're going to go through Congress now, now they're, they're still using money or getting money somewhere is this money pretty much um all the, the the drug trade money from Afghanistan and such, or and the local drug cart cartels, okay. they're still running the, the CIA. pharmaceutical industry. Right. They've still got major major influence with the um, uh, health care and insurance on that aspect. Until now, we've been notifying the insurer and insurers and various entities. But these things are just, it's profound, and, and step by step, you have to evidence what they're doing. Step by step, you have to make sure that you have the evidence solidified before you even open your mouth. Well, we did, yeah, before the genocide doc, and on the genocide doc, when that got laid down, a lot of the stuff I thought was going to stop immediately, but it's still going on. Right, but it, it has been. They've been shutting down hospitals, they've been shutting down public schools, they've been shutting down departments. Now it's hitting the actual um, meat and potatoes. Uh, uh, what was it? The, this last week it was back to back. Uh, Radio Shack was laying off and closing down, and then there was a few others. And it, it's falling because that private funding is running out. You've got other entities claiming bankruptcy because their fu private funding's running out. They've been funding these municipalities, and they can't carry them anymore. We know that. The um, the uh, cloud seeding um, that uh, the uh, true seeker movement calls the chemtrails uh, that's funded through grants. Now, what about that money? When's that going to start drying out for them? We're seeing it run out in several places. Although there are still reports that I'm watching, and and this is on my news feed. We get updates uh, often. There is uh, chemtrailing in specific parts of the country still, uh, cloud seeding, but not like it used to be. I'm not accepting the lesser of two evils, but it has lessened as to reporting. Okay. And then, um, you know, so these Congress critters, I mean, we, we know they exist off of far more beyond their salaries, but when, you know, How's this? When does this directly hit their salaries? It has been. They've been laying off, shutting down departments. The army laid off a whole bunch of people. Army but these are lower off. totem pole uh, people right. so they far. They always call the lower on the totem pole yeah, first. Yeah, that's them doing that. There's nothing right. they could do to stop them from. But that's the reason we've been here. We've been trying to get the lower people on the totem poles, and we're saying, look, they're about to cannibalize you. You might want to get out of the way. You know, do something to uh, protect yourself, self-defend. I'm telling you it's going to happen. And now that it's happening, and, and we've seen this like this last week uh, with the communications with uh, municipal judges and the like, you know, they want forgiveness. They want to come back mm -hmm. and they're, they're trying to sell That's what you. Karen Hughes' job is. Right. Karen Hughes, oh, I'm so sick of these patriots jumping on the Karen Hughes bandwagon. Oh, okay, did you not see that she uh, is an attorney? Okay. Now, besides that, who is she pointing the finger at? The World Bank. Okay. How is the World Bank allowed to come into existence in the first place? Congress. Right. Is she pointing the finger at Congress? No, she's not pointing the finger at Congress. Because that's her job, is to divert the attention from Congress. Karen Hughes is a traitorous, treasonous, uh... No good, low life attorney. That's all she is. She's not a whistleblower. Saving her own butt. Yeah, she's trying. Yeah, and she, now she's not teaching forgiveness too, isn't she? Absolutely. Yeah, well, we got to forgive them and just we got to move on. And, you know, straighten this system up and get it get it working better. Get rid of the corruption. Right. You no, know, the system is the corruption, uh, Karen. 
Absolutely, and that's the majority of the agents that we've had around recently is, you know, trying to sell these concepts of forgiveness. We all need to live as one. We all need to get along, get along, everybody. But humanity already does that. And I have no intention of getting along with a psychopath. I want them removed from their ability to harm humanity, and that's what we're... Right, and the most dangerous ones are the ones that sound like they have humanity in them, but, you know... They're attorneys. Right. Come on. And, and we're seeing they're gonna, them fall. They're going to kill you with a smile on their face. Right. Holding and, their, their hand out for the money. And they're going to pat you on the head as they twist the knife. Absolutely. And tell you somebody else did it. Yeah. We're not killing you. It's just this knife is killing you. We tried to get you guys to vote for better knife laws, but, you know, we can only do so much for you. Right. <laughs> and that's that's a pretty groom, gruesome analysis, but it's true. It's Stockholm Syndrome. You patriots out there, I want my Second Amendment rights. I got my First Amendment right. It ain't your right, buddy, unless you're subscribing yourself to it. Then you're subject to it. And all the benefits and privileges that go with it, like getting charged for commercial crimes under 27 CFR 72 dot 11 have a nice day yep thank you for doing business with the united states incorporated tattoo 1009 still out there after i've given him i know that guy's a shoe i've given him all the information he needs to look into with the articles of incorporation articles of association and then the uh uh you know um 1802 um Articles of um, indemnification convention. Yeah, indemnification convention, um, but the enablement acts. Right. You know, he's still stuck on that one enablement act about. It's all about Washington D.C. You know, the act of the act of 1871 uh, took our sovereignty away. Yeah. You know, I. I, I mean, I can't help it. The guy's dumber and dirt, or he's an agent. So. I, I know he's an agent, so I'm just I, I'll just I'll just play along and pretend he's dumb. Right. So he likes to play. I'll play too. Right. And it's that simple. Don't cast your pearls to swine. Just do whatever. Let them entertain themselves. That's you know, all we can do. He's running around with the heart. With the heart uh, maniac. You know, he does sense. You know, he puts out some good information. You know, it's kind of interesting sometimes. But you know. He never looks at the grants. No, don't look at the grants for the funding. Let's just talk about, you know, how they might be doing it with, uh, you know, uh, these huge electromagnetic uh, generators right, uh, in, in Alaska. Right. Symbolization. Just don't talk about the Dunsel coil. No, don't talk about the, 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 the I'm sorry, the Dussel coil. No, I, I'm afraid to uh, actually... Uh, Tattoos the Dunsel coil. <laughs> <laughs> a Dunsel is a object that, that serves no useful function, by right. the way. Hey, we need to put that in our new lexicon. Write it somewhere and have it legislated. It's just been so profound. And do we have any more to say? Um, I know I just... We need to get to get this information out there because, uh, again, you know, being subjugated so much on on YouTube and other venues right now, um, we wanted to get this on record before we went any further with other things. Well, there's some people out there that get it, you know. Um, so someone someone's saying that uh, Karen Hughes uh, gives them the willies. <laughs> yeah, well. She gets, yeah, she's, she, she creeps me out, too, but I, I mean, I know what an attorney is. A lot of people are still thinking that the attorney's there to, to help them. They just ran a story on, uh, like, mainstream media, was it, and NBC or CBS or something, uh, about, you know, how to save, you know, how to cut back your course, your, your, your costs during a divorce, and, oh, you know, and, like, and they hide it way down the bottom, you know, like, and, you know, next to the end and with some fluff, you know, you know, make sure you get a good attorney. Right. <laughs> yeah. Get a good attorney. Yep. 
I mean, well, who, now they're where do they come up with this company. stuff? Well, they're, they're, they're now saying that they're sponsoring these commercials, too, which was interesting for me to see um, the other day when I was reading through my news feed. I read that on the show the other night. It's quite interesting. Um, did, did we cover that? Um, I don't think we did because it was so new. Well, yeah. And, and again, we've been trying to put this into perspective as to what's written in the rules, the rule book, and, and Revelation. We're right about, uh, you know, we're seeing um, things unfold in Revelations 18. We're still wrestling the uh, ten-headed beast with the seven horns. Right, the dragon. And, um, and that's all these tentacles of Congress, essentially, we're looking at. Well, the UN. I mean, because they've had so much authority granted them by Congress, and then, of course, Congress is the top level. They've been extorting you know, 90% of everything from the nations, from the United Nations. Um, but their intent since 1974 was to simply come in and foreclose on each nation in a roundabout way, which they were doing with the Reclamation Acts. And, and they're really, really trying to pump that up, too, as well. Um, we're seeing that a lot in Michigan. They're attempting to come in and, and garner anything that they can and sadly, these municipalities, these uh, four nations are being targeted. And that's what we're seeing in, in Michigan right now, um, just as much as we've been seeing throughout the years. Except for now, it, it appears like the federal state is, is in chaos and it doesn't know what to do. So it's just grabbing land wherever. Yeah, yeah, you folks got to stop supporting any of these Congress critters. And foremost, and especially Rand Paul. He is going to be the most dangerous out there because he's riding the coattails of his father's patriotism that he sparked across this this nation. And the patriotism is just another side of the same beast herding you back in to that same, uh, you know, where they, the slaughterhouse, the cows. It's all, it's all leading to the same shoot. You got your libtards, your Democrats, your Republicans, your your your, your uh, neocons, your um, you know I don't care whatever label you want to come up with, uh, you know, libertarian. They're all herding you back into the same slaughterhouse. Right. It's all Congress. And okay? they're all the same actors. They are. You know. I mean. You know. Rand Paul calling out Obama and suing him is like the pot calling the kettle, the kettle black. That's all it is. Right. And, and there's no pun intended. Uh, gray Hitler is Gray Hitler. Uh, he's just he's as neutral as he's ever going to be. Um, he's neutralized for a reason. Because if you go against him, he can call you racist. If you're white, if you're black, if you're Mexican... Uh, he can call you intolerant, intolerant if you're Christian. He can call you, call you intolerant if you're uh, Muslim. And, and that's his position. He's able to do that. And that completely neutralizes him and makes you the bad guy if you try to say that, no, he's a bad president or whatever. And that's, that's the only purpose that he's there. Yeah, you know, and now him and Putin got a scheme worked up because... As I try to point out in my videos, they're working in tandem, all right? It looks totally different than the way it really is because Putin is clergy for Congress, okay? KGB is the CIA uh, Russian counterpart. Um, you know, I, I mean, pe people don't want to accept that, but deal with it because that is, that's the reality of it. Right. I, I mean... That now, you know, they got everybody in fear of, uh, or they're trying to get everybody worked up in fear of World War Three and nuclear exchange with Russia and Canada. You know, Harper's kicking out like 10 uh, Russian soldiers from there and such. And, you know, and it's all just acts in a play. Right. And this is what they do. And, uh, you know, and, and the soldiers probably, the Russian soldiers probably don't even know that. They... You know, they're 
in the same boat as the sheep. I was like, well, them, them darn Canadians are kicking us out. Why them? You know, and they go back home and stir up more crap with the troops, you know. Right, they're just fed intelligence through the Central Intelligence Agency. The you production know? company on behalf of the United States Incorporated for, for the sole purpose of trafficking in human beings. Now, yeah, no, Obama's like, uh, he's, all right, he's bad. He's great Hitler, okay? You know, he's a mouthpiece of Congress. But, you know, what his own people would like nothing better than to do and to see happen, it's already written out in that church committee um, staff reports on foreign military intelligence as to what they did to JFK. Right, his own and, brother. But that's not to our. That's not going to help anybody. If they off, if they off Obama, no. that doesn't help anybody. Uh, you know, what what should happen with all of them though is they should uh, be fed back into their own system to produce. You know, um, and facilitate the uh, currency flow back towards people, you know, on the, the United welfare. States lower case. Right, the general welfare, and that's what was written. That's what has been written, and that's what we're seeing. Well, I'm not saying you should have a nice life or anything. I'm just no. saying that. No, and, that, and that's what we're seeing in the mainstream media. Um, not only the other night I read off the um, judge magistrate that was charged with sex offenses, um, you know, that one was in Utah, and Yada yada. Right now, they've nailed a high court judge um, in the UK. This is from the um, DailyMail.co.uk. UK high court judge and the child sex ring advisor to Queen was founder of pedophile support group to keep offenders out of jail. One of Britain's most senior judges actively campaigned to support a vile pedophile group that tried to legalize sex with children, the battle on Sunday can reveal. Lord Justice Fulford, named last year as an advisor to the Queen, was a key backer of the Notorious Pedophile Information Exchange, or PIE, which police suspect of abusing children on an industrial scale. Now... And he's got a wig on in the picture. Yep, he's got a wig on in the picture. Mr. Fulford! Yeah. Sir! But, do you see that they just took down one of the judges trafficking children through use of legal mechanism? Mm -hmm. This is how it happens every day, and now it is no longer tolerated. That's why you're seeing these charges being handed down. That's why you're seeing the... Revelation. So we may have to deal with an impeachment of Obama or something. I, or, I mean, I'd rather see him indicted, but right. But no, he'll he'll get his whatever he's been involved in. Um, remember, he was an attorney well before, and a senator well before he became president of the United States Incorporated. So, so he can um, produce as a good attorney, right? Right. Okay. Yeah, and then there's, here's this one, IndyStar.com, too, um, goes along with what we were talking about there with Fulford. Feds arrest Newcastle Community Schools counselor on sexual exploitation charges. Now, again, a school counselor under the Department of Education, um, basically that's Congress, uh, the new surety. And see, Muncie... This is Muncie, Indiana. I guess federal authorities were in town Monday to announce the arrest of a Muncie resident facing sexual exploitation charges. Daryl Hughes, a counselor of Newcastle Community Schools, is accused of giving male students marijuana and alcohol and taking them to his West Charles Street home where he allegedly took nude photos of the use. Some with the hidden camera, some were reportedly given ecstasy, the drug, I guess, and said he awoke to find himself being sexually assaulted. Sick. 
This is what those school counselors do. But thankfully, now that policy has changed, now that the bar is risen, these monsters are being held accountable. This is not ending up the way that Nazi Germany did with the psychiatrist diagnosing everybody with everything under the sun in order to institutionalize them. They're actually taking out the judges and the psychiatrists, which was different than Nazi Germany. Yeah, and we did that by swapping the surety. That a great entry. I keep trying to tell these um, code pleaders out there and these people practicing law and want to argue and you know, you know, all the people that are in the law movement sound like a bunch of stinking attorneys anymore. You know, you can't tell them anything without them wanting to argue it. Right. You know, and uh, the difference between them and the attorneys is the attorneys at least had enough sense not to argue it. They just turned back to their color of law statute because that's all they had, right. which is nothing. Right. Statement, uh, statements of compulsion. Right. Nothing. Nothing. So, let's see here. And for these uh, these links, we'll get these links, uh, these stories together, and put them in a nice uh, package on our YouTube video when we post it. Right? Yep. Okay. I think we're gonna wrap it up, unless you have anything else to say. Oh, I don't know. I mean, all these I've been reporting on some of them as I can find time on YouTube, and um getting myself in the back in the production here and thanks to uh, uh you know basically uh, uh ubuntu now i'm running ubuntu as my main operating system and it's much more stable i don't have to worry about all these antivirus programs yada 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 so it's just getting over the learning curve here with it but uh yeah, now I'm getting some stuff back up on YouTube and reporting on some of these stories. And it's like, um, you know, they're just all over. I can't cover them all. You know, I mean, I'll have to go back to doing headlines. But even when I find when I do that, you know, I'll cover so many headlines that all the links will fit down in the uh, description. Right. I, I mean, they're just coming out like, like more and more. It's like a, a dam that's starting to bust loose here. That's what I think. Uh, let's see. No, let's see. Uh, so I wanted to point out Rand Paul, you know, because like he's got big CPAC victory or whatever the heck that means. And right. Oh, uh, this plane that went down. There's still no news of that. Um, that looks I have a feeling. It, I mean, they're gonna hype it up as a terrorist thing and absolutely try to get garner people's consent for the war on terror right um Plus, no matter what happened i mean we don't know what happened but right they'll, they're they'll spin it to, it to their yeah they're already posturing that two people had stolen passports mm -hmm. and, and um about a dozen work for this tech company. Well, they wanted to call some of their employees. That's that's relative to Nazi Germany. It's easier to take out, you know, a whole department and a corporation through an accidental, uh, you know, uh, happen chance than it is to lay them off and take the liability or fire them and take liability or whatever. Um, so who knows? I'm still watching that. My internet is slowing down on me. I'm not able to pull up the next story yet. Okay, uh, let's see here. Enough. Let's see. Yeah, why don't we just go to the top lower? Because I got a few stories here, probably yet. Um, let's see. Um, so yeah, that's M Malaysia Airlines flight carrying 239 passengers. I mean, and, and it's sick, you know, to know in the past that the operations have. You know, killed off a whole plane full of people just for a couple on board. Right. You know, that's the mentality of... Uh, psychopaths. Of psychopaths. And, you know, what what we're uh, patronizing, you know, and going vote for Congress and right. all this stuff. Uh, 
Let's see, the Ukraine situation, still a big um, theater, of course. Um, what are they trying to say now? Uh, Ukraine invites NATO to hold meetings in Kiev. <coughs> NATO. Okay, that's just another face of Congress. Um, why there will be war in Ukraine? Well, yeah, because uh, they need the war to garner the sheeple's consent. Right. The only way to stir up them. the patriotism, get them dying for them concepts, so they know that their their concepts are selling, and they can sell them more. Right. And they have to have humanity pit up against itself. It has to maintain the division under the eight stages of genocide, classification, symbolization, organization, dehumanization. Um, and, and denial is a big one. You know, we covered that on the last Leaving the Farm this week. Um, it, it's just profound in all of these things that can be occurring, and still, you know, justification can be maintained in the mind. You know, that's just, it's so concerning to me to watch these things, and, and um, I, I just want to pick people up and hold them, but I can't force them off of their... Their daddy, that Uncle Sam that keeps preying on them, you know, that, that one bad Uncle Sam. And that's what they should have called that pedophile that, that roams around on Family Guy. He should be called Uncle Sam. That's exactly like the Uncle Sam is. He's just a predator. Uh, the IRS, Internal Revenue Service, of course, it just preys on human beings. It generates revenue. It doesn't collect any taxes other than the burdens it places on human beings. Yeah, that's Quagmire. Right. What a name. Yeah, Quag. That, that that's a perfect name for Congress. Quagmire. Right. He he's the he's the epitome of attorney or a, or a pilot. But that old guy that always goes after Chris, you know, that's the one that creeps me out because he looks so frail and and everything else. But in in reality, he just he hates children. He lusts after children, and it's so disgusting to watch stuff like that because it's 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 leading the illusion that these kind of things should be accepted or tolerated in some manner when in reality in a relative state it would have never been tolerated to this extent to this extent where you're yeah i driving mean driving to churches and the, the you know that the priests are all pedophiles and you're paying more and more money just in case you'll get a pedophile that isn't a bad pedophile yeah it's sick yeah, yeah, you see, you see more and more court cases coming out in the uh, mainstream media about priest pedophiles. Uh, you know, I, I mean, how this stuff is allowed to, to, to start in the first place. Exactly right, okay. Well, you know, so, you know, uh, Congress is looking out for us so much, they allowed uh, these monsters from Monsanto to uh, basically... Uh, uh, screw up the, the the gene pool for all the plant life on the planet now we'll be dealing with that even you know even we stop uh, monsanto seeds this year i mean it's already an environment right uh the the roundup the roundup is in the air and the water it's instead of 75 percent of the air and the water they're saying absolutely and and congress was funding them with development grants you know anybody can go to grants.gov and look at who's been funding Monsanto in these countries. Who's been sending them in? They're, they're like a, a, a front-line military force. Although Monsanto is sold as some kind of other thing. But they're actually a front-line military. They've been federally funded to develop other countries. As well as the United States Incorporated. The land mass uh, that they've had a hold on. And they know what it does. They have contracts with the FDA to use human beings as a human test subject. Th their intention is not to, you know, feed the masses. Their intention is to kill it. It's to kill humanity. That's the intent. That's the name of the game. That is what's written in the 1974 Memorandum 200 to the National Security Council by Dr. Henry Kissinger. Those are the things that are written... You know, everybody goes back to the population bomb and the warning of Ulrich. And John Holdren was a friend of Ulrich. And here you have John Holdren is a science czar in this administration. He's in, in, the, in the administration at this time. These people wrote another book called Population Matters. And if you read that one, it would make you sit to your stomach. 
You know, this is the stuff that, you know, racial cleansing is, is talking about. There's eugenics programs and, you know, teaching conceptualized fear, fear-mongering everybody, calling everybody, you know, on coup. Tonight I was having a conversation with somebody and I was, I was actually raising my voice because uh, this individual was telling me that there's, you know, people that, you know, possibly shouldn't be allowed to live because they're sucking off the air of other people. And he was basically describing what was relative to Nazi Germany called the useless bread gobbler. And, it, you know, I just, I, I've been dealing with these ulcers again, and I was just burning all the way up in my throat talking to this person. And I'm like, holy crap, how can that mindset be established? But then when you go back and read about it, in such as the psychiatrist, the men behind Hitler, it says, you know, integrated into the, 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 to the school system. First, you have to sell it to the minds of children. And that's what they have done. They've sold it to the minds of children that there are less, lesser human beings. They're not worth it because they're low income. They're not worth it because they're brown and they're low income. They're not worth it because they're Muslim and low income. Or they're elderly. And that's this, some of the stories. It's just sickening because I've watched this fall throughout time. In the UK, when uh, Kevorkian was dancing around the United States Incorporated, they were actually killing people to make rooms for more people to come in and, and sleep in the beds in the hospitals in the UK during the time that Kevorkian was doing these things. But then when you watch the fallout of all of these model theories, it's in the Netherlands. And these elderly individuals feel, feel like they're useless bread gobblers. They feel like because their productivity is diminished, that they're not worth as much as other human beings. And I, it boggles my mind that we can get to a point in time when humanity can view, be viewed as an object by other human beings and to be measured by a measure of productivity or capacity or ability rather than just being. This is mind-boggling to me. It makes me ill. Now here's one for um, the what the hell are they thinking category. TSA orders half ton of high-powered explosive. Okay, this is the uh, Department of Homeland Security we're <laughs> working for us again. What the hell are they doing? They're going to put on another CIA presentation. The CIA said it was the underwear bomber. Uh, let's see here. 9-11 hijackers' passports were issued by the CIA. Whistleblower Michael Springman. Yeah, they, the CIA already said that back in 2012. Yep. Um... And let's see here. Yeah, basically in this report, it was like the Warren Commission report. It was just uh, right. it was right whitewashed for Congress, you know. Absolutely. Uh, and they'll never read it. Right. You know, I've read it out loud on my YouTube channel, and there's, the viewership is like down still around 300. Nobody wants to hear it even. No. It's dry as heck. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Yeah. You know, or another thing they do is they... You know, demonize the Palestinians over there in Israel. You know, they just basically, they want to build another 1,400 new homes on uh, Palestinian territory. It's like those Palestinians, I didn't think they had anything left to begin with. but No, they bulldozed it all and said it was theirs, and then they codified it. And that's what the attorneys do best. They go into another country and they say, well, that's not up to code. That's not how we do things. And that's what enables them to bulldoze people's homes over and claim an area of land. The attorneys go in there and say, we're protecting you. We're protecting you. They make everybody sick, then offer them hospitals. They kill their kids in child protection services and blame Israel for it. These places are Congress-fed, Congress-funded. Now, now, what do you think about this now? Because the FBI has launched an investigation into, uh, and this has been a big story all week, of uh, the Corrections Corporation of America over the uh, companies running of an Idaho prison with a reputation so violent that inmates dubbed it the Gladiator School. Absolutely. The, uh, the FBI is investigating? Yeah, yeah. They're gonna... That's like the Fox uh, Garden the Hen House, isn't right. it? Right. It's the same thing as Kendrick Johnson. 
when they covered up his death. They said that was a natural death for him to die wrapped up in a, a gym mat at his high school. These things are just sick, 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 sick. And the FBI investigating does what exactly? Doesn't do anything. Yeah, yeah, they're just, um, you know, like Karen Hughes. They're just diverting attention from Congress. Right. Uh, you know, the FBI is the United States Incorporated Police Force. Right. Uh, now, we had that uh, anchor woman step down from RT live on the air this week. What uh, did you think about that presentation? A, pre a complete presentation. Now, she must have got... Uh, Basically, uh, you know, prodded along by CIA, I'm thinking. Right, and paid a lump sum to come work for somebody else. Right, right. A lot of people are saying CNN already. I don't know. I haven't verified it. Yeah, she's been making a lot of time on CNN already, so. Yeah. Um, let's see. I want to work for somebody who tells the truth, and so, of course, somebody's going to come in and hire her like CNN. It's funny. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, John McCain's little job approval. Well, I guess oh, that's he's a monster. sort of a good thing, but uh, he shouldn't even have a job approval. He should have a uh, uh, inmate approval number. Right, ditch digging. Uh, License plate making. Yeah, McCain is just he's he's just uh, one of the worst of the worst, man. But I mean, they're all Congress, so they're all the worst. Right. Okay. And some of them just are in a better position to do more heinous things. But, you know. No more accepting the lesser of two evils. It's still evil, everybody out there. Uh, let's see. Now, we had Buffett come out and say, now this is going on um, a week old now already. I know, but, you know, uh, that he lost some number, $700 million or something. Right, almost a billion dollars they're doing an online. I thought that was really interesting to see him come out and actually maintain that. Now, that's going to be a hard thing to explain. We've touched upon it in the past, but, yeah, basically well, he, the IMF, uh, you know, came out in their own um, literature this last year and, and talked about the unwinding process. And that was a direct response to uh, the agreed entry uh, with Northern Holding. Right, and specifically to the utility corporations, um, utility services. Uh, at that time, you know, as we've, you know, evidence for everybody, uh, the assessor K trusts were actually shoved into the Massachusetts Land Trust. And everything was siphoned out of there and put into the utility companies. And before all these bailouts and everything else, um, what's his name? Buffett had come in and, and bailed out the public utility corporations. So a lot of the ownership went to such as Jimmy Buffett and other uh, predatory national states that enjoy preying on humanity and and um, we we brought it right up against him last year if everybody remembers that's part of the original case that went through United States District Court and then into uh, lowercase United States Court after condemnation uh, one of the parties on that was the company corporation which whose parent company is um, Buffett and, and such as Nipsco and, and other utility corporations. Now here's the, yeah here's the headline I was looking for earlier to go along with um what we were talking about in the uh, sexual uh, abuse of priests and stuff. Texas Texas Catholic Church settles another case of sexual abuse by former priests. Catholic sure. Diocese of Fort Worth reached a settlement this week with a person who accused former priest James Riley of sexual abuse, according to a news release from the diocese on Friday. Terms of the settlement were confidential, and the person asked to remain anonymous, said Pat Shh, something, uh, spokesman for the diocese. Well, and there's always gay orders. If you accept this... $200,000 settlement, you yeah. can't talk about the case, you can't tell them that we really admitted to, uh, you know, 
not only raping your children, but also we had some interaction with your dogs and your cats oh, and stuff. Yeah. You can't talk about these things because you're Ugh. settling out. You're taking that bag of silver, Judas, and, that, and that's what it's all about. Are you going to protect yourself and um, accept a payment for rent on your body, or are you going to protect humanity? And, that, and that's the bottom line. Are you going to be the fornicator there and entered in a contract as a horror babble? Taking rent. And, and the worst part about it is the people always suffer. Like, you know, like this deal here. Putin, um, you know, threatens to turn off gas supplies. You know, like that's going to help anybody. He's been doing that for, you know, the last ten years. Yeah, and Putin, everyone would say Putin's a good guy and stuff. No, uh, no he didn't. he's another Stalin. He just uh, hasn't had the opportunity to off that many people yet. Well, he has. I mean, he was uh, reducing their... Uh, gas and oil uh, years ago when they got control of the gas and oil pipelines there. You know, here's the Russian Confederacy, same thing as Congress, the Confederacy, the Perpetual Union, torturing its sheeple, and it increases reliance on the government when, the, you know, they live in, in cold locations in the, in the dead of winter. Here they are, you know, wrestling with the sheeple as to you know, gas and oil production and reserves and everything else. And that, they do that on a low-key level here. They say, oh, we ran out of oil. I was seeing that this last week uh, in the southern states. Oh, my gosh, we've run out of oil. We can't supply oil. We can't supply gas. We can't supply natural gas. These things are all just presentations. They're trying to get people, the human populace, to rely on them. Everybody needs to... Uh, you know, be more self-secure, be more able to do whatever you need to do to take care of yourself and each other rather than being reliant on these things. And I know how hard this is because there's such a reliance, but with that reliance comes the force and pressure to create more and more reliance. And, 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 and you know what you get for this reliance here? This story came out... Uh Oh, uh, this last week here on Mason County News, um, dead soldier gets one cent check from Canadian government. That's what the soldier got. Like ten years later, the 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 the, the uh, you know can Canadian government cuts his estate or whatever a one penny check. Well, That's they they don't even, they don't even issue pennies. In, in the banks up there in Canada anymore. No, I just... I haven't been into a place. bank in a while. You know, here, I don't know if they still are or not. Last I, last I thought they would cash a check and give you pennies. If it was like... I mean, it's been so, so long, though. Who knows? But, uh, yeah, up in Canada, they do not... They're not dealing with pennies anymore. Right, that's just a slap in the face. Uh, let's see here. We're looking at another one. CDC warns antibiotics linked to deadly bacterial infection for children... Antibiotics. This is Sacramento, California news, CBS, or CB, yeah, CBS local there. Um, CBS 13, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention are warning that antibiotics are being linked to severe and deadly bacterial infection in kids. Alice Schleen takes her time uh, when her three-year-old son... Noah has to see the doctor. Uh, I stay a long time. I ask a lot of questions, she said. And after hearing about a new CDC study released on Friday, she's going to be extra vigilant. We don't really use a lot of medication, she said. Good. So stop going to the doctor. Look, their antibiotics kill you. Their anti-anxiety medication are used in lethal injections to kill prisoners. It's not worth it. Stop going to the doctor. That that reminds me of that uh, that um, episode of The Simpsons where Homer Simpson and Apu go up to that guy in the mountain, you know, and they say, can, and Homer says, "Can I ask you a question?" Uh huh. Can I, oh, really? Uh huh. And and uh, so, are, is your re really name uh, is your name really the Shah or whatever he says? He goes, uh-huh, thank you very much, have a nice day. You know, they're done with the three questions, you know, and that wasted all that time. But she's like she's like Homer there and goes, so are you guys killing us? Yeah, yep, uh-huh. Are you really killing us? Yep, sure are. Yeah, right. we're killing you. Right. 
And and then they don't stop after that. They don't stop going. Can you to set me up for another appointment next week? Right. Okay, sure can. Right. Maybe you can jab my baby with some immunizations while we're here. Maybe you can sterilize them too. I mean, these things are ridiculous for people to even. Yeah, we'll get your baby on Halprin if you'd like, you know, right. to press that lung uh, breathing capacity of that child. Absolutely, out of that, maybe some Demerol. Because that child's too healthy, it's not producing very good for the medical industry. Right. But they are now telling you on the mainstream media, American Broadcasting Corporation, ABC, that antibiotics are killing you. Stop taking them. CBS, that's corporate broadcasting. Oh, CBS, sorry, corporate yep. broadcasting corporation. And... Um, Everybody needs to be aware because this is how they facilitate clean hands doctor and they tell you look These and and it says all of them mm -hmm. These are killing you Now they've given you warning. This is notice If you continue taking them you're committing suicide If you let your children take them you're murdering your children. That is what clean hands doctrine is They're telling you that these are killing you if you take it after this. It's your fault not theirs so just a fair warning, heads up. Oh, and there's been a lot of stories like that, too, and I'm sure have just gone, like, uh, right over the sheeple's head. You know, they don't see it. Uh, I mean, the, the whole deal with uh, Justin Bieber, how they're just basically Terrible. like a bunch of piranha circle them. Right. He said he was going to retire, and they've been on him ever since. Uh, let's see, all these actors that are, uh, you know, and their offspring um, running into... Uh, you know, um, finding themselves dead or whatnot. Uh, right, criminalizing financial troubles. You know, the the um, housewives couple, they finally pled guilty. Both of them did. <coughs> so all in all, they're just being redistributed. They cut their losses, but they were still redistributed. Nobody's left untouched. And everybody needs to stop with the classification, stop with the civilization, stop with the eight states of genocide because this is being allowed by the consent of humanity consenting to these things yeah and a lot of these alternative media uh websites out there i mean they're just perpetu perpetuating the same sort of uh diatribe you know the Democrats versus the Republicans, uh, the liberals uh, versus the conservatives. Uh, right. You know, that that's the paradigm they've created, you know, just like borders for, for countries, uh, right. for states. It's another way to parch you out and redistribute you better. So let's see if we can get you to uh, subscribe yourself to being a democrat or republican and or a female or a male today or any other title they get you to buy all these concepts and then they get you to buy the rights and benefits that come along with the concepts right that's the biggest problem i have with these patriots is they can't see how demanding their second amendment right uh is you know basically uh exactly what the law birds and swan and you're just perpetuating you know the, the system you know not ever looking at the fact that in order to be able to sell you those rights back in the first place they first had to steal them from you yeah like a thief yes they're they're a thief like uh just like time is a, a is a thief right and that's what federal reserve is Reservation of right superior for one sect over another. Upon that reservation, the opposite sect is redistributed. It's already stolen of its rights because somebody has other rights that they don't have. That's what makes the world go round. That's what makes this corporation run. That's why Jesus was so adamant. Don't do that. First Corinthians 6. Don't you know that you're going to be able to judge the saints? And the world should be judged by you. Why are you doing these things? And that's, that's, I mean, he was just so profoundly adamant. He was yelling at the disciples by that point in time, 1 Corinthians 6. And he's like, what the heck are you doing? What the heck for shame? He says, I'm so ashamed of these things. And, you know, they couldn't hear him. Corinth, they spoke English, just like here. 
the language of commerce. These are commercial goods, consumptive goods, uh, human resources, you know, with the, that whole mindset of tolerance, tolerating an owner, tolerating a puppet master, tolerating somebody, a slave master, because they're the lesser of two evils. Oh, they're not as bad as the last mayor we have. This mayor isn't as bad as the last mayor we had. This this cop isn't that bad. He's not as bad as that other one over there that killed the guy in the back seat of the police car. Um, you know, and all of these presentations is just it's for advertising mechanisms. You know, it's to advertise upon humanity and say, look, I, I'm here to protect you. I'll be here to protect you. I'll be here to protect you. When in reality, it's a predator. It's it's worse than the wolf in sheep's clothing because the wolf in sheep's clothing only has the illusion of the sheep's clothing. This thing, this system has a CIA, a production company behind it. It's got the Broadcasting Board of Governors that has full international control of all U.S. civil media. And it's just, it's horrifying to watch all of these things occurring and so many people tolerating. You have to stop tolerating, stop accepting, stop consenting. Now Kissinger raised his ugly old codger head in the uh, media here this week too in the Washington Post. Mark, well, this is March fifth now, but uh, you know, it's his uh, story about how uh, the Ukraine crisis ends. Now, when you go through and read it, though, I mean, he's 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 per he's perpetuating the. the the illusion, you know, that, uh, you know, it's, they're all separate governments, which they haven't been since 1941. Right. You know, he's talking about how uh, Stalin and Hitler divided up the Ukraine in 39. Um, you know, but basically the solution he's selling you is the same old system. Right. That's what Kissinger's function is. Right. He's the one that came up with the Office of Population Affairs in 1975, which is a depopulation program. And I urge everybody right now listening to go to OPA.gov. When you get to the Office of Population Affairs, tell me what you see. It is the Department of Health and Human Services. That entity, that thing, is a depopulation program. It's meant to offer you hearts and minds, or the winning of hearts and minds, by which to engage you in the war, by which to win you over so that you're subjected, you're subdued in this war. That's what that thing is, and he's the creator. Yeah, and, um, yeah, no, we haven't forgotten about Kissinger. That's why I brought his old name up there, because uh, even though he's, like, one of the only typos I ever made on any of my paperwork, uh, I spelled his name, I think, with a... Uh, what did I do? Forget the, uh, yeah, I use an E instead of an I for the second I. But whatever. We know who he is. There's only one Kissinger, you know, kiss my buttinger. And, yeah, he's right up there in the, uh, the header, shall we say. Absolutely. But he doesn't have much time left to produce. He's like 90 years old. It's okay. He gets to feel it. And, and an eternity ain't in hell. Eternity is however long your form lasts. Even if it's going to last a week, you're going to feel the burn of it. And that's what, you know, that's what was promised to me. I follow the word of God to a T. And um, it's based on the promise that for all those who killed the lamb, they shall be killed the same way. Yeah, that's what I bank everything on. Um, based on every rule and that's where we shall be soon I'm not backing down yeah so take some of these uh, alternative news outlets especially the real patriotic ones you gotta take them with a grain of salt you know I mean they're they're there to promote civil war I mean you know, the, the whole second amendments argument thing you know when you quit accepting that, you know, your rights come from that constitution or from your government. Uh, there's no discussion about any of this nonsense, like, can you own something or not? Or can you grow something? Right. Yeah, you know, can, can you take a seed, 
that comes from the earth and put it back in the earth and help it grow. Oh, uh, well, you know, attorneys know what's best for us. I guess we can't grow that no more. Right. We can only we can only go to the supermarket and buy that GMO stuff because that's what the attorneys have have given to us. So they must be, you know, looking out for us. Sick. Yeah, I know. I, I, I it sounds ridiculous to hear me talking like that, but you break it down, that's what these patriotic arguments are. Right. You know? But it's good entertainment. So, you know, Alex Jones, uh, Limbaugh, and uh, Michael Savage, you know, they, they're just, they got high ratings because they're just entertainment. People just want to be entertained. And that's what the... Uh, before its news website now has went to. It's all about uh, trending uh, what what's going on with uh, what, what sheep are wanting to watch. And you can just see the stories that entertain the sheeple. You know, uh, Nibru to hit the earth next week. Or, um, what's you know, the sky is falling, Chicken Little says. Right. Constantly. Constant controversy. Constant entertainment. Um, and again, we've got to raise that bar. Yeah, if you're being entertained with this. Right. That's crap. the whole point, raising the bar. People got to raise their own bar and, and you know, quick, click, clicking on these stupid links like that. Right. Protect each other. That's Stop right. Stop worrying about what's going to come and start worrying about what's happening now. There is a war going on right now. If they're, if they're arguing about, like, how much of a fine they should have for harming humanity, they're, you know, their uh, argument's wrong. Right. That's Get the out. wrong argument. Right. Get the F out of my garden. Get away from me. That was the only answer. That is the only answer. Get out of my garden. Get away from my babies. You don't belong here. You're not going to rent me my own garden for me to be a beneficiary or a constitutional theorist or something other. You call me as a fiction. Get out of the garden. Get out. This is our garden. This is mine. And you better start thinking about your own garden here. Right now is the time because, um, you know, out in the West Coast, I guess, they no longer have to uh, mark their labels that it's GMO. They can just stick whatever they want in there now and sell you. Six. So watch your produce, folks, and take care of each other. And make sure that you guys are safe and not in harm's way because of what you're choosing to ingest. And you'd be surprised, you know, what you really don't need. Um, a lot of people are just participating in so much, and, and their, their bodies are paying for it. You know, we need to get back out of all of these things, and, and especially those that... Yeah, all your fruits are radiated, so, you know, they're, they're basically dead when you get them, and you're eating stuff that's supposed to have vitamin C in there. There's no vitamin C, or vitamin C vitamins right. got ascorbic acid uh, right. instead of the citrus. citrus. So they're not even, Juices I don't even know how they're able to call them vitamin C, because no. you're just throwing your money away when you buy uh, those multiple vitamins at Walmart or whatever. Right, every one of them, and including now the organic juices I have. Uh, preference towards uh, the organic side, but even the organic juices have the citric acid removed out of them. They don't have citric acid anymore. There's no vitamin C in the products, and that's what we're limited on. We're limited on our sun exposure, vitamin D exposure, and our ability to take our bodies through the Krebs cycle alone, which is the metabolism. The Krebs cycle is also known as the citric acid cycle. Uh, and with the requirement comes, of course, the commodity and Congress uh, taking out every nutrient. And, and you know, years ago, uh, Dr. Rima was speaking about this, you know, on Nutricide and the, and the extent of the Codex Alimentarius and the extent of the gameplay over there. And again, it's, it's dry, you know, nobody wants to listen, but... I urge everybody to be aware of your surroundings and be aware of what's going on around you so that you can descend. If you do not know your enemy, you do not know when it's coming. 
If you know your enemy, you have a better chance of defeating that enemy. Doesn't sneak up on you like a snake in the grass. Yeah, so I guess um, get yourself together because um, we've got another big week started here. And uh, there's some man, stuff really going on. I mean, if it, if, if, you know, if, if it wasn't for uh, the depressing situation of Rocco being behind bars, I'd be pretty excited about stuff. But I mean, it's still kind of exciting. There's going to be. Um, Something big is going to happen. It's not going to be a small thing that comes out of this. I mean, either way. Uh, but um, they have to release. I mean, they have to uh, let him go, discharge him. Discharge, right. Yeah. yeah we're not, Under, uh, not releasing Rock. Right, right. They can't even say he's a prisoner of war. They can't say anything. And, um, you know, that's the evidence that's coming out this next week. We'll get everything. We're trying to start putting. That's going to be interesting to see how they dissolve McHenry County or whatever. Right. Yeah, it's going to be entertaining. It has to be entertaining. They're a marquee. Yeah. Who knows what they're going to come up with? But well, I'm not going to feel sorry. Okay. You know, we gave the U.S. Marshals all the chance in the world and was patient with them. They had their chance. Right. That's that 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 opportunity's come and gone there, right. um, Mr. Uh, U.S. Marshal Service sure. uh, Critter. Sheriff as well. And, Joel Berg. And, Joel Berg. And I want to find out who that guy's mother was that uh, is the one that came in um, right. yelling at uh, Rock like that. Because I want to send um, her that uh, audio recording right. of his son and how she uh, how she uh, treats uh, non-violent human beings. Right. He needs to have his mouth washed out with soap. Yeah. I think uh, that would be a good start. Tasing him too. He needs to be tased. I don't, I don't know how many times, all in all, they tased Rocco until we speak to Rocco. But on the audio alone, we heard ten or eleven times. I mean, this is just oh man, that's just unbelievable. I mean, they would hit him right place in the chest with that thing. It would have stopped his heart and killed him. Right, and I I believe always that that's the intent. If you look at how many taser deaths. In comparison to bullet deaths, bullet has actually a 20% chance of killing you because it can miss an organ or whatever. Now, a taser has an 80% chance of killing you. It has more of a, a kill rate than a bullet because it's more precise. It, it alters your electrical activity. It stops the heart, stops your brain. And, um, you know, a lot of people think that it's um, less invasive or less violent, but it's just sold to people as less violent because it's bloodless. You don't bleed when you die from a taser death. Yeah, yeah. The most dangerous weapon on the planet, though, is still Congress. Right. Attorneys. Yeah. I think we're gonna wrap it up now, right? Yeah, while. yeah. I know you sound pretty tired, and uh, yeah, I gotta get ready for a big week of uh, reporting on all the fallout. That's getting ready to come down here because I can feel it. We got, um, I'm going to see a bunch more cops getting busted this week. I'm going to see a lot more attorneys. Absolutely. Hopefully, some more corporate counsel attorneys and judges, doctors, counselors, you know. I mean, these sick ones that are getting exposed, I mean, that's just not a few of the, uh, um, you know, their kind. That's how their kind is. Right. That is their kind. That's what makes the game play out is all of these tools and mechanisms in the game. And now they're taking out the mechanics of the machine, which is nice to see. Very, very nice to see. But thank you for bringing with me tonight, Bo. Go to chooseyourside.org and, um, you know, click on that uh, um, documents page. Read the case, start familiarizing yourself with the case, because um, that uh, agreed entry, basically, uh, I want you to see that and wrap your mind around it. Wasn't argued, well past the 30 days, set in stone, that's what is facilitating this opportunity for humanity, okay, to um, basically um, stand up, you know, and resurrect yourselves all right think about your offspring here because um 
they're going to have to deal with this mess. And, uh, you know, we're get, you know, giving you the, uh, the opportunity to basically, um, uh, resurrect yourselves and, um, the rest of humanity here and turn this thing around here for once and for all, at least the next thousand years. Absolutely. And hopefully after a thousand years, because we were already told what would happen in the way that this was facilitated, it should take care of. I mean, just think about, happen. just think about this stuff. Uh, you know, I mean, alien scientist, I used to watch him back in the day on YouTube. He's, he started posting again and everything, but you know, he doesn't understand how science is being suppressed by the law merchants, the very ones he wants to go and, you know, petition for uh, these new advanced uh, electric uh, trains and all that. You know, all this good science is only going to be suppressed. I mean, look what uh, J.P. Morgan did to Tesla, just right. as an example. But I, that's a topic for another show maybe we can on the other side of this when we come out we can start talking about solutions and i know there's a lot of solutions out there that'll just you know they'll be able to run uh you know to their to their dreams desires and um not be subdued by the law merchant be able to actually facilitate some of these advancements Absolutely. like maybe, maybe they can finally stop the uh you know the greatest computer of the greatest computer killer of all, the pop-up. Right. <laughs> Maybe they can actually finally scientifically find a cure for yeah, computer viruses. Yeah. Maybe by stop making them. Yep. So we're going to take us out with Seventh Son of a Seventh Son by Iron Maiden. That's like oh, one goody. of my favorites. I love that song. Be well, everybody.